In this video, Joel Nelson is gonna break down five tips that'll help you catch more walleyes this winter. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right into number one. I want you to fish higher in the water column than you're used to. I don't want you to wallowing around down in the bottom. Now we know that walleyes love feeding off the bottom. So often you'll see that mark just come right off the bottom and separate and work its way up. And that's great because that's where they're originating from. But the problem is, is if you're jigging down there, two things happen. The first thing that happens is you're surprised. You don't see the bite. You don't get to see that fish develop on your jig and you get to work it upwards as easily. A lot of times it's there. You might even feel a hit and miss it because you're blind. If the marks merge, you don't see much. The second problem with that, the fish doesn't see you as easily. So if you're a fish and you're looking across just like you would the, the underwater landscape, like you would in an underwater camera, you see a lot of brown or lake bottom out in front of you. Now things that are higher off the bottom, say at least two or three feet off the bottom, they get to look up and quite often that's light coming down or if you're shallow enough, maybe the bottom of the ice and fishing higher in the water column, again, easier, for the fish to see you and easier for the fish to find it and you to be ready for it. So those are the two things that you need to do and that fishing higher in the water column is really gonna help you with. All right, that's number one. The number two thing <clears throat> that I'd love to see you do when you're out walleye fishing is give them a buffet, a variety. If you're fishing with other anglers, which so often we are, right? Fish a number of different looks. Give them a horizontal look, give them a vertical look, you want something with rattle and flash in there, maybe to attract fish into the spread. And then definitely a good live bait alternative uh, or live bait solution that's going to have them come in and eat on the days where rattle and fat flash might drag them in, but not necessarily get them to seal the deal. So go ahead, vary your spread, fish together as a team, right? Use all of the rods and the people that are with you and the anglers that are fishing with you uh, to your advantage, right? This is one big science project. That's the way I look at walleye fishing. It's a super ton of fun because it's like a lab experiment every day out on the ice. We're trying this lure, we're trying this depth, we're trying this bait, we're trying rattle, we're trying color, we're trying flash, we're trying style and profile of the bait. And with enough looks in a target rich environment, you let the walleyes tell you what they want to eat. And that is the best way to figure out the secret to any bite. You're going to have clear patterns, clear winners that emerge as, hey, these, these are the ones that work for today. For the time period we're out here, for the weather conditions we're faced with, for the depth of water we're at, this is what the walleyes love today. The way you figure that out is by varying your spread. Now that's some really good advice from Joel. I know most of you probably have that one bait that you feel like just catches them more often than not. For me, that's an eight ounce buckshot spoon and one of those perchy colors. I just have a ton of confidence in it. But if you're not playing around and trying different things, then you are definitely missing out on opportunities to catch more fish. Maybe it was a really tough bite and you only caught four fish, but maybe if you had played around, you might have found something that the walleyes wanted a lot more and you could have caught 14 fish. So that's just something to think about. But now Joel is going to move on to the next tip and he's going to stick to the topic of presentation. Hey, let's face it. Walleye fishing is all about the details. Uh, the best anglers that I know, the guides, the true fish heads, the walleye snobs, the, the guys that'll only fish for walleyes that do the best out there are always dialed into the details. And when I say details, I'm talking about very specific minutia. I'm talking about rods and reels that are paired to the lure, right? We've got rods um, that are the proper stiffness, the, the right length, power, and action to fish any given application such that not only are you gonna detect more bites that way, but you're gonna present the bait in a manner that's much better for the fish, that looks more natural, that has the right snap to the jig. Uh, I'm talking about details like line diameter, like line size, using the smallest amount of line, smallest size line that you can get away with in any situation so that the bait is presented more naturally. I'm talking about things like swivels. I'm talking about uh, making sure that if you're fishing spoons, You've got a swivel tied in 9, 12, 18 inches, depending on the length of your rod that you're fishing, uh, further up from the spoon so as to reduce line twists again so things are presented naturally. I'm talking about details like how you're hooking your minnow head 
onto the treble hook? Um, are you pinching the minnow just behind the gill plate? Are you using half a minnow? Are there certain times where you want a really long profile to mimic large bait that you're using the whole minnow? Anglers that I've fished with that are the best of the best just focus and obsess over these tiny little minute details. And so often at the end of the day, they're the ones with more walleyes in their bucket because they did the little things right. Little things make a huge difference when it comes to walleye angling. You only get so many opportunities when you're out on the ice chasing walleyes. Some days you're gonna go out there and you might get two or three dozen bites. One of those super crazy days that just don't happen all that often. But more often than not, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna get a handful of opportunities, a handful of fish that are willing to swim up to your hole and check out your bait. So. It's on those days where it really pays to pay attention to the details like Joel mentioned. So that was a great tip and now we're gonna move on to the next tip from Joel. So often when walleye anglers are out fishing, um, they focus so hard on where they fish. They focus on the baits, their electronics, they drill holes all over the place. They're painstaking in their efforts. And then at the moment of glory, the moment of truth, they go to swing and they go to set the hook and their drag isn't set right. <laughs> and I have missed, I'll be the first to admit, my fair share of walleyes over the years because walleyes are a little trickier than certain fish. You need that drag cranked down just enough to put a good hook through a hard mouth, especially for trophy walleyes. You need to set the hook a lot harder, especially at depth than you might think. So you need that drag fairly tight. But after you set the hook, the fish rises up eventually comes to and starts fighting and bulldogging, or when you reel this fish up and it's mere feet below the ice and it really starts going crazy, and really starts bulldogging and going nuts, you need to have just enough slip such that your light line diameter doesn't snap on you, right? That you don't lose fish. So setting the drag for walleye fishing can be a tricky process. What I love to do is I love to grab the rod and give it a good yank, like a a good hook set and I want the drag to slip but only slightly. I don't want that drag to just easily pull and whip through or you're not putting a good hook to the fish. Uh, on the other side of things I don't want it so tight that when I set the hook there's no give whatsoever. At that point well, I'm just hoping my line doesn't break so setting the drag such that after you've done all this hard work after everything has been prepped and properly gone through you're putting good hooks to the fish, and then when a fish takes off, it has just enough ability to let that line slip through the drag. That's a recipe for success. More people should focus on setting their drags properly. That's another great tip from Joel. If you actually want to land the fish that come by and take a bite out of your bait, then you definitely want to make sure that your drag is set up correctly before that fish shows up on your sonar screen. A couple other things you want to take into consideration is how big the hooks are that you're using and also how hard the mouth is of the fish that you're chasing. So if you're using big hooks, you're going to want to tighten your drag a little bit more and set your hook a little bit harder to get those hooks up into the flesh of the fish. And also, if that fish has a really hard mouth, you're going to want to do the same. Set the hook a little bit harder with that drag tighter. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, if you're using a really thin wire hook, then you definitely don't need to set the hook super hard. And if that fish has a soft mouth, then setting the hook too hard might just rip those hooks right out of the mouth. So something to consider, but now Joel is gonna move on to the fifth and final tip. You've probably heard me say this last tip before, um, but I can't overstate how important it really is to ice fishing and my success on the ice in general. Um, I fish with my family, I fish with my kids, I fish with friends, and we're always in this group situation where we're trying to catch fish for everybody, right? We're trying to bring fish to the bait. Now with ice fishing, it's not like open water fishing. I can't make a cast and drag fish underneath the boat. I need to bring fish directly under me, so probably the most important thing you can do is to fish something loud and proud. And you know what? The times where it's hardest to do that, when there's a cold front, midwinter, fish are negative or neutral, middle of the day, these are the times where it's hardest to fish some of those loud and proud baits because in the back of your mind, you're saying to yourself, that's probably not what's going to catch fish. That's very true. But somebody in the group, and we can take turns, right, needs to be that sacrificial lamb, that person that is going to take one for the team. They're gonna fish something loud and proud. They're gonna bring in fish from the sides, and then your dead six are gonna go off. 
or maybe a fish is going to slide by one of the jigging spoons that's a little bit more subdued and eat that instead. It's really important and I've seen it time and time again uh, when drawing fish in from the sides you need something more aggressive like this ripping shad. In stained water situations um, where rattles really do a good job and aggressive vibration really does a great job of bringing in fish from the side, man there's there's few baits as loud as this one that do that so effectively any kind of predator uh, a walleye a pike uh, they're they're going to hear that they're going to feel that in their lateral lines they're going to come in and they may not necessarily eat this bait uh, especially during those cold front situations those hard bite situations like i said but it's going to make everybody in the house appreciate what you got going on now i'll kind of mix that up with maybe a clearer water option this rattle and puppet minnow is unreal because hey it's got the rattles in it we can see that we know that but it also has just incredible action it darts it swings on all those swings and darts the flash on all those great colors show through it's really a great clear water bait uh, to attract fish in from all around because they see that flash from distance and they feel the rattles so it's one of those situations where Hey, again, this may not catch all the fish in that given day, but it's going to be one that brings them in for the rest of you to catch. And even the buckshot, even the humble buckshot spoon uh, in larger sizes is one that I use to bring in fish. There's times, especially in clear water, especially in super neutral tough bites where they don't want any rattle. They want minimal movement. They want minimal sound. It's all about finesse. There's times where that buckshot is the one that's calling fish in for the dinner bell. So ring that dinner bell. Remember to fish these baits in early season when fish are aggressive, fish them fast, drill lots of holes, be efficient. But don't forget about these baits when the bite gets tough. Don't forget to be that person that really is the hero that brings in fish from the sides and take turns, right? And when the bite is sour, try and excite fish into biting by bringing in lots of different fish from the sides. Eventually, you're gonna encounter fish that are willing to eat some offering you have up for grabs. Well, there you have it. Five tips that'll help you catch more walleyes this winter. Special thanks to Joel for sharing the information. If you found this video entertaining or learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below so we have a lot more awesome content coming this winter that you're not gonna wanna miss. So we will see you in the next one.